It is NFL Draft Week, and of course that means Seahawks rumors are going to be all over the place, George. And, you know, it's it's always weird to do these on Draft Week because you don't really know what's going down, and it's all he said, she said, and it's all speculation. And the latest speculation was this morning on Adam Schefter's uh, ESPN Plus article where he said the Seahawks are being linked to both Michael Penix Jr. and Troy Fatanu. But the organization remains very high on Sam Howe. It is the one way of giving information while also trying to be like, but there might be nothing to it. Two UW guys, one of them a quarterback, but they also like the other quarterback. Now, we wouldn't be YouTube on YouTube or, or doing podcasts or content creators if we don't talk about it. But what it, do you? What do you think about number one, the Michael Penix side of things, and number two is all these links and different things that happen before drafts. Cause sometimes it's hard to know what's actually real. You're listening to the sports on tap Seattle podcast. I'm Sammy. And with me as always is my older brother, George, your favorite place to be a fan of Seattle sports. Now let's get this party started. Right. I mean, and both of those guys could be gone at number 12 and 14. And then all of a sudden you aren't linked to them anymore, but you were going to draft them if they're available at your spot. Do you know what I mean? Like, so to me, you or hear they're these available rumors, and you don't draft them or you don't draft them. That's the, or the they're flip available side. and you trade back. And you draft, <laughs> or they're available and you draft one of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, there's so many different options on freaking draft week. And that's what makes it so fun. It's one of those like Pandora boxes that you open up. And then for years and years and years on end, people like if you, I mean, if you're a Chicago Bear fan, you're still saying, how the hell we take Mitch Trubisky over Patrick Mahomes? <laughs> and, you know, like it's one of those things where you, for years on end, you might be talking about who you took and what you could have had. But I do think there are some legs to these rumors. I'm not saying we're going to go draft Michael Penix Jr. or Troy, Fa- Fa- you know, me in Hawaiian names. I can't even pronounce things. So you're going to have to help me out here, Sammy. But... um I mean, would it make me excited as a Washington Husky alum and a Seahawk fan? Yes. But at the same time, you just want the organization to draft the best guy possible. I mean, I don't know what to say other than that. But I do want, like me personally, if you ask me, man, I, I do want Michael Penix Jr. as our quarterback of the future. I think that'd be fun. I like him, and I like his personality, and I also happen to be a fanboy. So... You know, like it, it's definitely a biased take, but yeah, it'd be great. Yeah, I mean, it just the, my thing is taking a quarterback at sixteen. <laughs> to me, it's like it almost doesn't make sense, and that's why I'm because like I feel like John Schneider wants to take a quarterback. Like mm-hmm. I don't know what it is, but he's talked about it so many mm-hmm. times that. You know, it doesn't stop us from getting a quarterback. And, oh, I've only drafted two quarterbacks since I've been to Seattle, which is so much different than what I'm used to at Green Bay. In this, in this. Like, he, it feels like he wants to draft a quarterback. But yeah. I don't think there's realistically any reason in the world that you would have traded for Sam Howell, who's a young quarterback that's played one year in the NFL, <laughs> for uh, on the same year that you're going to draft a quarterback. Because you could have waited to figure out a backup. If Sam Howell was going to be your backup, you could have waited to get a backup quarterback um, and, you know, or like found a way to move off Gino if that's what you were planning on doing. And so I don't know. It's kind of weird. But at the end of the day, maybe it's also based on, like you said, like we, we also don't know what's going to be available. So that's, see, that's where I was going to go with next. Yeah. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you can always get a backup quarterback if that's what they were trying to do, right? You could always get him in the second round or the third round or the fourth round. So I just, I'm wondering if there's just a lot of smoke screens being played by the Seahawks, and people will believe it when it comes to Michael Penix, especially. They have his offensive coordinator from college, there's the Seattle Links. There's obviously so many reasons that a team would truly believe the Seahawks are about to take him at 16 if they want to trade up to go get him. So. They're either utilizing this as draft power to get more picks Hmm. or there's some serious links to it. And my big thing, though, with Michael Penix is, you know, he can't sit behind for more than one year. He's 25 years old this season. Like, you can't have him starting at 27, 28, you know, like. 
You know, okay, I, I'm I actually just before I say anything, I want to check the age here. But oh, I was going to say, say it. Jordan loves age. He's 25. He's young. Is he's Jordan the same love? Age as wow, that is crazy. I was going to say, like, you can wait on a quarterback, but wow, that's pretty crazy. You should know oh. that because we talked about Jalen Hurts and Jordan Love. That's Love right, like a couple of days ago. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to check. But, you know, Sam, like, I- I'm going to have to disagree with you on this pretty big where you say there would be no reason to draft a quarterback. And I would only disagree with this for one reason. My reasoning is pretty simple. If you, the quarterback position is the most important position in all of football. And there's no guarantee at 16 that Michael Penix Jr. is going to be available. You're still going to need to play the season this year. You can't go into the season with just Geno Smith and a backup you don't like. So, Because I feel like I think this year there was like a total of 48 different starting quarterbacks in the NFL. There's injuries. There's underperformance. We had to start Drew Locke at one point this year because Geno Smith was hurt. You need a competent backup quarterback. So even if you're high on Sam Howell, in my opinion, you can still you can go get Sam Howell and say, hey, here's an asset. But at 16, which, by the way, there, no quarterback we like might be available at 16. But if you see a quarterback sitting there that you actually believe could be a franchise, amazing. You're a guy who could actually, you believe, lead you to a Super Bowl sitting at 16. You got to take him. doesn't matter if you have Sam Howell. That's like how I look at it. Yeah. I mean, that's what's odd, though. It's like, you know. Because 16 is a weird number, too. Also, you know, if you were eight. also projected to, you know, like not be a top 15, 16 pick. Like from he, he's projected more of a late round, late first round. Some people saw it said second round. So. I don't know if this is why, once again, I'm talking about smoke screens are very real, right? Because, They're very real. It could be a smoke screen completely. Yeah, there are teams that would never, and I'm not, I mean, I like Michael Penix. I'm biased because, you know, we like the Washington Huskies. But it, there are teams that, you know, like, it, it's it, the, the, the confusing part is there's maybe a team that would have never taken him at 16, but they will do it just because they want to trade up the Seahawks because they're worried they were going to take him and they wanted him at 28. But like, f- fuck it. If we want him, we got to find a way to get up there. But that's what's weird about the NFL draft, right? You could be projected a uh, top five pick and or you could be a Aaron Rodgers, right? And fall on a draft. You can be a uh, Lamar Jackson and, and go all the way to the 31st pick, even though you're a Heisman Trophy winner. And then you could also be the... I don't know, the Baker Mayfield, which was like a surprising first pick in the draft, right? Yeah, People were absolutely. Like, like, wow, really, first pick. Like, and, and, you know, so it's, it's so hard to determine. I just still think that – because, okay, you said at 16 it's hard to get the quarterback you want. But if he's at 16, do you think that a team like the Seahawks think that means he is the guy? Like the franchise, the future. I have no idea. I like literally zero idea. I'm just saying, if I believed, if I believed, if I'm sitting there, I'm John Schneider, and I'm like, this guy, Michael Penix Jr. to me, or Bo Nix, whoever it is, right at 16, is the franchise quarterback that I've been looking for, and this is the guy, type of guy I believe could lead me to a Super Bowl. I'm not gonna sit there and be like, I have Sam Howell on my roster. I can't take him. <laughs> you know that? Like that's yeah, how sure. I look at it. You know so. But maybe they don't believe that. Maybe they're like, you know what? I don't like any of these guys at 16. I'm not even looking at a quarterback. And like you said, it's a smoke screen. I have no idea what's inside yeah. of them. But I do think if they thought he was someone was there that could lead him to a Super Bowl, they would have to say, this is my guy. I'm going to take him. Because we saw what a good quarterback that you believe in can do. Look at the Texans last year. They went from a team that was in the dumpster fire to winning a playoff game to this year, people are talking about them as Super Bowl contenders. It can flip real quick if you have your – Yeah, but C.J. Stroud was the number two pick in the draft, so that's a little different. But, yeah, 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 no, no, you're absolutely right. But Patrick Mahomes was the 11th pick in the draft, and they second year and they were in the Super Bowl. Behind. I know, but he – it's different. I mean, the, you said it'll flip like this. It, yeah, the, yeah. I know, but, like, it, it doesn't flip like that when you're, the like, 16, 17. Like, Mahomes wasn't even the quarterback the first year. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's what like, I'm saying. The second year, like, the second year, it can flip like that. Russell Wilson, second year, boom, you're in a Super Bowl. Like, it can flip. first year, too, though. Yeah, but in the second year, they're in a Super Bowl. They can flip no, really, no, I really quick. I understand that. 
I'm just saying, yeah. I feel like sometimes it's really different, though, with these, like, the top, top picks. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, look I just, at Mac Jones win 16. Look at where he is now. He's a backup somewhere in the league. Like, it could also yeah. flame out. I don't know. It's it's going to be really interesting. I think the I, – I, I just don't know. I'm either leaning that, like, the Seahawks are going to take something really cool at 16 that's either, like, surprising, which could be, like, a quarterback – because I know, like, the – I guess the standard would be, like, oh, they need O-line help or we need a this. Like, I can see them taking, like – Boring. Cooper, yeah. <laughs> like, Cooper DeGene or DeJon Harvey State. Yeah. Like, oh, white defensive back? Cool. Or, like, quarterback and, like, shock us. Or they're going to end up just trading back. Like, I, I, I don't know. But I <laughs> yeah, think that's the thing is, Michael Penix is a fun idea in concept given the fact that – Obviously, Ryan Grubb's the offensive coordinator, and Scott Huff, the offensive line coach, came from UW as well. And it's just, you know, staying in Seattle. And he's mm-hmm. also kind of had this, like, under, you know, this, like, this little underdog, uh, like, cool story, just like the injury comebacks and kind of being underrated over and over and over again. Um, you know, leading the Washington Huskies to a national championship appearance and being the runner up for the Heisman. But it feels like a lot of times he's finished second this last couple of years, right? Like quite not good enough, not quite good enough to be a top 10 pick, like runner up in the Heisman second in the mm. national championship game, which sometimes is a good thing for a college quarterback. To be honest, we've seen a lot of the golden boy quarterbacks recently in college come to the mm-hmm. NFL and struggle a little more than those that are the, you know, that have gone through some shit. Like we've seen Absolutely. the, we've seen the Trevor Lawrence's come in and it's a little different when you're not winning 14 straight games every single year and winning the national championship. We've seen the, you know, a lot of these, the Bryce Young's, it's not that easy to be drafted to the worst team in football at the number one pick. And on top of that, be used to never losing. So right. I feel like with Michael Penix, he, he would be perfect on a team like the Seahawks or any of those middle-level teams that are not shitty right now. And he can come in and contribute. And you never know. Like, kind of keep fighting that under, you know, that, that underdog that, that second place. Story. Yeah, That's, that underdog and second place story. And eventually exactly. it'll work out in the NFL. Yeah, totally. And I think that's a good segue to say here, like if you're watching this, we're about to record a video about like quarterbacks and like Caleb Williams and what it takes to like basically what's it like to be number one pick with all the pressure. It's in the link in the description at the sports on tap. So you guys should check it out if you are interested in quarterbacks. You didn't sell that very well. I'm just saying, you know, that was a tough one, George. You Why? said there's a, there's a there's a video that's like well, about like yeah, the well, quarterbacks. We, the reason <laughs> is we haven't actually recorded it yet, so I don't know exactly where it's going. But that's on our agenda is to record one about quarterbacks, Caleb Williams, and like guys with a lot of pressure coming in as number one picks. Well, that that was better sell. That was a good sell. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've seen a lot of the number one picks. Like, there's been a lot of ups and downs, but you've seen guys do good. Like the Kyler Murray's of the world's had some great times, but you've seen the struggles of Baker Mayfield going up and down. Trevor Lawrence. Like, you never know. The number one picks hard, and being a quarterback in the NFL in general is hard. So yeah, for absolutely. all these guys, a lot of the times, including whoever ends up on the Seahawks, if they take a quarterback or not, or if they think Sam Howell's the future, right? Regardless of what they think. The, the thing is, with a lot of quarterbacks, I truly believe it just depends where you are, too, and what your fit is. Because it is – there are guys like – maybe Russell Wilson wouldn't have worked if he got drafted to the Bears. Maybe right. it worked because he was on the Seahawks. And the same could go for Justin Fields or if this guy was drafted somewhere else. You know, like, it, it, it's hard in the NFL. So we'll see what happens. Thursday is coming up, and I think I'm excited because we finally have less speculation and more, like – Here's something the Seahawks have actually done, which is yeah. take a quarterback or take an offensive lineman. We actually have players to talk about. <laughs> exactly. Looking forward to it. Well, you're listening to the Sports on Tap Seattle podcast, the Seahawks version. And uh, please check out the links in the description on the YouTube channel if you want to get the podcast or see the other channels, uh, just including like the Sports on Tap football channel. It's the one that says other NFL in the description. If you're on the podcast and want to watch this, you'll see the link to the YouTube channel as well. Please like and subscribe. Leave a review on the podcast places. Do whatever you can. All those things help more than you know. And you know what we like to say, George. Thanks for stopping by.
Peace. See you next time.